Let's do this stitch ponytail. The first thing you want to do is get to the top of your client's head. That's going to be a part from ear to ear and a part from the middle of the client's nose all the way to the back in the middle of the knee. And I'm going to go ahead and show you guys here how to do that. Throughout this entire video, I will be giving tips and different things that you guys can do while doing a stitch feed in ponytail so that way you guys can get the best look and any tips and trips that I have done along the way that I like. Also, let me know as far as how you guys feel for the view and the angles. So do you like overhead like this one or how it was before side from the side view? Right here, I am going to be connecting that one side square to the front square. You basically just connect one to the other to get that perfect middle center. I'm going to do a single braid in this middle area. Some people will do two or four in that area. I don't like a super crowded ponytail. I like for my ponytails to lay as flat as possible and less braids in the middle make it where I can get it closer to the middle for a tighter ponytail, I've noticed. So this is the braid gel that I am using. When I apply my braid gel, I apply it to the hair, um, but this client, she has a really soft, like really soft hair. So there will be times that I will add it to her actual scalp to be able to get a cleaner part. You guys can do it on the scalp if you've already moisturized the client's hair. That's perfectly fine. Um, the braid gel will block you from getting any other moisture in. So unless you've already went and played with it for a little while. So at the end of the style, I typically go ahead and do it. But after you just did it and then you try to put something onto it, you'll notice that it just loses don't really go anywhere so right now I am going through and sectioning each one of those quads I am going through and cleaning up the parts first because I like to just braid and flow with it I really don't like to have to part each braid that I'm doing so I go through and I part everything first then I go through and just braid so I really don't have to think about it I just flow so right now I'm going through each one of the quads and I am making a braid and making sure it's even. My goal with this ponytail is to make sure each one of her braids are as even as possible as far as how wide the parting is. The thickness of the braid is always different for me compared to some of the others. They may like a super skinny braid, some may like a super thick braid, but I always let my clients choose on what they like. I prefer a kind of in between a skinnier braid. Um, but ultimately, I let them choose because it doesn't change the time of the style. The time of the style changes by the thickness and thinness of the parts, not necessarily how much braiding hair you're using. So that is what I am doing here. Just sectioning off all of my braids that I'm going to do. This is a pretty easy ponytail, just a straight into the one ponytail instead of designs. So I want to make sure each, each section is really straight. If you guys are doing your sections and you notice that some are bigger and smaller, please go back and go fix it. Don't be ashamed of going back. Go back and go fix it. I've been doing this for over 20 years and I still have times that I go and fix something. So here we are and we're going to do a stitch braid. I'm going to show you a couple different angles of this up close and in real time. So for the ones that want to learn and, want to, and they're really good at look and learn, this is great for you. When I do my stitches, I start from the outside of the perimeter for that part and slide my finger straight to the middle of that part that I'm doing. So it's going from the outside to the center. Switch outside to the center and switch. And I do the same thing all the way through. When I'm ready to add hair, I just slide it under that index finger and go over to the next one. Sometimes you will see me where I do a different way of adding the hair and I do that because of the position that my hand may be in. I do know a couple different techniques and different ones are better in different positioning. So I just use which one feels good for me. But right now when I have a hard time getting in that angle, I just slip it under the index finger. See that one is a different where you have it where it hangs out. And I like that because it pulls the hair in when you have a hair texture that is a lot 
looser or a lot looser in texture, it works really good for them. But when you're working on those perimeters where you're really close to the edges, I don't like to pull too tight or have too much where it's pulling the hair. And that technique does tighten the braid. Always braid down a little bit into your ponytail. You don't want to stop as soon as the braid leaves the scalp. And you want to do that so that way when you get ready to start braiding down your ponytail, your thickness is the same. And this is going to be the same thing, but in a different angle. And you're going to have some closer ones with it turned towards the camera as well. But this one is a side view, so you can see me really grab from that side and then I glide with the other finger. So I'm going to part with the finger and grab with the other one and glide it in. That's going to help you keep it where it's smooth. And when people use a comb, it does that for them. So whichever one that you're using, you'll notice that that's what's happening when you're braiding. And this is another angle. Now this one I did so that way I can show you guys, we all don't get it all the way right all the time. And this one, I wanted to redo it. <laughs> I wanted to redo it, but I didn't. And, um, Partially because I didn't notice until after she had set all the way up and then I was just like, ugh. But then, I mean, half of the time we will be a, a huge critic to ourselves on things and they don't care. So for me, this braid, the braid looks very neat. It's just the angle. I didn't like the angle of the braid. I would have preferred for it to be going from the ear then going back, but it's going from behind the ear and going back. So it kind of makes like a curve. And I would have preferred it to be a straight. But because I'm short and the angle that I had, I didn't see it until after she set her head. Now on this one, when you guys get to the part where you're about to braid off from the scalp, I'm going to show you a tip that I do. Anytime where I'm braiding down, because sometimes I may pull while I am braiding down on a braid, clipping it saves the client's head so that way you're not pulling their hair. You're attaching the clip to another braid, which keeps it strong so that way it isn't pulling backwards. Because that hair, as you reach to that ponytail, it gets thinner right there. So if you clip it there while you're braiding down, it helps them so that way it's not tugging on their hair. And these are another couple angles so that way you guys can see different ones and how I would do a front. On a front, I always give an extra, the, all of the perimeters, I'm gonna say that, not just the front, cause even my back perimeters, I give a decent amount of space because I don't like for my clients to have pustules. I don't like braiding over them. So I would rather have a wider space at the front edge than a tiny one. And then they have bumps everywhere. And then their next appointment, I have to braid over that or decline the client if they're too bad. So this prevents the bumps for me. Um, if you have that issue, try it out and see how it works for you. If you guys are liking this video so far, give it a thumbs up and then go ahead and subscribe so that way you guys can see the other videos that I have coming up. Now on this top one, we're going to be braiding, but I like to add all of my curly hair to the top braids. I don't like doing them to the back braids because then it's like the curls are sitting underneath the ponytail and nobody sees anything back there. We want to see the curls on top looking pretty. So I typically do my top braids where I add the curly hair. So here I go through and as I get to that, once I leave the scalp, that's when you'll see me add the curly hair.
When I get ready to leave off the scalp, I add a little jam. When you add a little jam to their hair, it makes it so that way you can hide their hair inside of the synthetic hair when you're braiding it down. That helps their ponytails last longer and it just looks better instead of you seeing their hair through the ponytail. So that's a nice tip as well. And then it's easier for you to cover it with it. So I added the curly hair there. And when I braid down, I braid down a couple in between and then I pull the other side of the strand out. So there we go. And I put that one up and then I just finish braiding all the way down. And I'm gonna do the same thing on that other one. And now it's time to moisturize and put that ponytail up. I always moisturize that center because it's gonna be hard for them to really get in there on a nice ponytail where it's pulled up. So I like to go in and moisturize that area. When you guys are pulling up your braids, if you can push those side braids inward, it makes the ponytail lay flatter. You see how I push those in and then it's like it brought it all the way in and it's like a nice tight ponytail. I love it when you have just that single one in the middle because now it looks like as if it was her hair put into a ponytail instead of a big bundle of braids. The rubber bands that you guys use do matter. You want to use some really thick rubber bands when you guys are doing a braided ponytail, especially if it's at the top of the head. When you do a ponytail that's in that top to that mm, top back type area and you don't use a strong rubber band, the ponytail hangs and it's very uncomfortable for the client. So you want to have some strong rubber bands so that way it holds really well and doesn't move on them. And I'm still moisturizing. I'm just pinning the hair up, getting it out the way so that way I can get the entire head. I missed with a leave-in conditioner, go through with an oil, and then I apply a foam. And for her edges, I'm a spritz girl. I still love spritz. Um, I don't really do edge control. I'm not an edge control fan and neither are none of my clients. So I do spritz around the edges and clean them up. If you let it dry a little bit, it gets tacky. So it's easier to have it hold its place. And I do a got to be glued over the actual braid itself and tie it down. By the time I'm done braiding everything, some of them, if I feel like it's still damp, I'll sit them under the dryer, but usually it's dry before I'm done. As you guys are braiding down your braids, this one is in real time so you guys can see. I don't speed braid compared to what some people would think. Um, for some people, they feel like it's speed braiding. I don't speed braid to me, uh, but this is how I close off my braids. I do a slip knot. So I grab a tiny piece and pull it out and then I wrap it around my index finger like I am doing a slip knot and pull that piece through the middle and pull it up tight. Same thing and I usually do about three knots and none of my clients have ever had braids that come down. Um, I also have a very clean tiny finish at the tips. I don't like blunt tips. They're super ugly. I, I do not like it. Um, and I'm going to show you guys how I dip my braids as well. This is how I clean them up. I use a wall clipper. It's my favorite. This one is one of my special edition peanuts. I love them, they're cute. And they get a lot of the hair off very fast. So as you saw, that one strip took off everything. Now I'm gonna go through and dip her hair. When you guys dip the tips, dip them by theirself. If you dip them by theirself, then let them hang and let the water like hang off of it. It will make it super sleek already. If you throw all the braids in there at one time and then try to do it, you'll notice that the ends are like bent and crooked and it looks horrible. So I dip the tips first by themselves and let them look cute. Then I go and do the rest of the hair and it doesn't make them look ugly. You see them? They all cute and pretty. That's how I like them. So. Then I drag down with the towel and I just smooth out any water and it looks gorgeous. I get as much steam out as possible so that way it's not sitting against their head where it's like, oh my goodness, so hot. But 
I don't dip up by their actual scalp too. I stop right before it's about to touch their head just because I don't like a super heavy ponytail. For my curlies, I mix them with water first, then I apply the foam, and then I go through and basically smooth them down separately. I like to do it individually because they just look pretty. When you do them all by themselves, they still look clumpy, and I don't, I don't like that. I like for them to be nice and cute and uniform. And you saw how that one snagged, it had a knot, so I had to clip it off. But this is it. <laughs>